Now, my friends, as computers become a bigger, bigger part of our everyday life, it seems that more and more people are finding a deceitful type of enjoyment in figuring out how to break into the computers of others. You know, very quickly it became apparent that there was money to be made, criminal activity to engage in, and harm to be done that would give someone else a, a competitive advantage. And thus, the cyber wars began. And of course, that war still rages, and it is hotter than ever. Sometimes it's fought between countries, sometimes between big companies, but quite often it is fought against you and me, the little guys, so to speak. So many people seem to be trying to get access to our personal information and our financial information. And that is not just annoying, my friends. It's downright, it's downright scary. And where many of us find this to be most true is through our email. Some scams in our inbox are obvious, coming from bizarre addresses or flagged as spam. But some others are rather clever and devious in getting us to open the email. But almost always there is another more lethal step they want us to take. They want us to click on a link that will take us to a place that we really do not want to go. Hopefully, we know not to do that. But at times, we're faced with that little envelope-looking thing that looks like a, a special gift just, just waiting to be opened. The attachment. But we know what the experts tell us, don't we, my friends? Stay away from that attachment. Do not give in to the temptation to open it. Because to do so will only end quite badly for us. So to put it quite simply, attachments can be bad when they come to us from an untrustworthy source. And we just heard a gospel story about attachments. About the man who had many, many material possessions who asked Jesus what he needs to do to inherit eternal life. This is one of those stories that is somewhat unsettling for many people. And the reason for that is many, many of us may see some of ourselves in this young man, even though we're not necessarily materially rich. We, I think, identify with the man's concerns, wondering whether we will live with God for all eternity. At one time or another in life, we wonder about that. And we identify with how this man sums up his very own life. He is basically a good person, like us. And for the most part, he follows the commandments, like us. And just like most of us, he doesn't go around hurting people, or deceiving them, or taking advantage of them. So isn't that enough? Isn't that enough to inherit eternal life with God? Obviously not. Because in a very caring and most loving way, Jesus told the man that there was one more thing, one more thing he had to do. And that was to stop being so attached to his possessions. And with that said, as we heard, that young man went away very sad. You know, I find myself troubled by the fact that he walks away sad. If we're being totally honest, then some of us might at times have had that same feeling of sadness because we fear that we have somehow fallen short of what Jesus expects of us. And yet, at its core, this gospel story is a hopeful one. Because Jesus is trying to keep us from heading down a path that we shouldn't go down, a path that will, that will keep us from embracing the most promising, joyful life possible. In essence, Jesus shared this gospel story with his disciples then, as well as with you and me here today, not for his benefit, but for our benefit, because he loves each of us so much more personally than we can even love ourselves. 
possessions, attachments. We all have them, my friends. And at times we cling to them like we are dangling off a cliff. And yet hanging on tightly to them is not a safe place to be. Being free of them is the path we need to be on. The path that leads us to, to a life of significant value, true peace, and incredible joy. From time to time, then, we need to ask ourselves, what are my unhealthy attachments? Maybe, maybe it's a job, or power, or material wealth. Maybe, maybe it's an addiction, a harmful attitude, a prejudice, a sense of entitlement, or maybe it's a person. Attachments come in all forms, and they could be super tempting, just like the ones that come in an email. But the safest and the smartest thing to do, the most faithful thing to do, is to waste no time clinging to them. And whatever else we do, do not open them, so to speak, because they'll only bring sorrow and sadness and disappointment and a profound lack of peace and joy that we all so desperately seek. And there's only one exception to this. If the attachment is from Jesus Christ, that is, if it is something good and holy and life-giving, then go ahead, click away, open it up, and hang on tight. <laughs>